good morning and welcome to University United Methodist Church. It's wonderful to have you here. And it's wonderful to have a light bearer in training accompanying Logan up as we expand our ministry of caring and worship together. It's good to have you here today. We hope that you are touched and moved and filled with the Spirit in this time of reflection, in this time of worship, in this time of prayer. It's good to have you here. If that did not call you into a sense of worship, I don't know what will. I invite you to stand and together we will say these words as we make movement of ourselves. The bells have already made their movement. Now here we are all moving into a time of worship with God. 
In times of peace and times of war, you are our constant. In the noise and in the silence, you are our comfort. When all is changed and we fear to lose our way, you are our compass. Ever faithful God, we worship you. You may be seated. We were doing two completely different styles of music. The first one was a Gustav Holtz tune that is very famous. And the next one is kind of a swingy version of Precious Lord, Take My Hand. And today we're adding a clarinet player from WSU. Madeline Not Vig Not Not is helping us. She is from Augusta and plays in the symphony orchestra and various groups at WSU.
I invite you to turn to, into your hymnals, or if you sing off the screen, it's number 117, O oh God, our help in ages past. God, our help in times past, and that that is yet to be is also a promise that we hold on to. I invite you to enter into whatever is your prayer posture and hear these words. O oh God of peace and God of justice, our protection and our shield, our light in every darkness, our hope in times of despair. November 11th, a day of remembrance. We bring to mind all those who serve this country, for those in the armed forces who around the world put their lives at risk in the hope of protecting the people of this and many other countries. For those in positions of leadership, elected and unelected, who have made choices to make and to whom we look for guidance. For those in health care and social care. For those in education for those in the emergency services. We give thanks for all and for so many others for their work and commitment. May you protect them and may they remain vigilant and dedicated, keen to serve others, and make this a more just and peaceful world, a healthier place for all to live. O oh God of all care, we recognize you at work here and now, through your church, through your people, through all those who seek to do your will. We know you look to us to strive and yearn towards the coming days, that we can be a part of a world that seeks to heal, to build bridges of care and support, 
to lift up the poor and the disadvantaged, that seeks to bring about your kingdom, one action, one word at a time. O oh God of all love, we pray for ourselves and all people, wherever their struggle, their dream, their loss, their status, their hope, may they know your love and experience your support through the communities that care and reach out to help. Be with us all, gracious God, that we might be your eyes and ears, your hands and feet, your heart and soul, wherever we find need. Today, into the silence, we offer our prayers for hope, comfort, and healing. We offer those that need healing in their lives into this silence. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. Into the silence, we give to you those that are in need of courage. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. Into the silence, we give to you those in need of hope. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. Today we offer prayer for Brian, Teddy, Betty, Clifton, Becky, Joel, Mariah, Dean, Kreth, Richard, Todd, Angela, Doris, Dot, Sybil, Verna, Isabella, and Shelby. Dear good and gracious God, you know their need. All of these things are asked in Jesus' name. Amen. Will the children come forward with Miss Lucy for a time of learning? We are going to just sit right here. And I know last time I did this children's story, I sat on the floor. And I know, it was about Daniel Tiger. And there were some people in the congregation that were worried that I wouldn't be able to get up off the floor. <laughs> so I'm going to. I'm going to sit in a chair so that they can relax. That's very beautiful. So usually those of us who tell the children's story, we base the story on the scripture that the grown-ups hear later on in the service. The scripture today was really, really hard. <laughs> and I didn't understand it. And I thought, there's no way I can explain it to you guys. So I picked a book from the library because remember, I'm the church librarian. <laughs> and it talks about another kind of difficult subject, but it really, yeah, it really explains something that's hard for me to understand. Pastor Joe gave this book to the church library so that you guys could check it out. Hey, Liam, if you sit on your bottom and put your hands in your lap, then everybody can hear. So it's called, What is God Like? Now, I grew up thinking God is love, right? But we can't see him, and we can't hear him, and we can't touch him. And I like things that I can see and touch and hear and, and put, put my hands on. But I love this book when I read it, when Joe gave it to us, because it helps me understand God. It says God... It's like a river. It's constantly flowing, and it gives life. And it says, God is like the stars. 
Because at night, when you go out, if there aren't any clouds in the sky, the stars are always there, aren't they? Yeah, we can see the stars. God is like a fort. It's strong and it's sturdy and the walls keep us safe inside. That's a good thing to think about God, isn't it? Ah, oh, God is a gardener. He grows plants, he grows weeds, he grows flowers, he grows food for us. That's a cool image. God is like the flame of a candle. Think about that. Those, those lights over there, God is like that flame. Or yes, right there, exactly. God is like the wind. It's full of mystery. God is here and there. We can see that what the wind does, right? We can see the wind moving trees, but we can't actually see the wind. God is like an artist. That one's cool, isn't it? He's creative. He's made wonderful things for us. Like the Mona Lisa? Like how is it? This one, God is like a mother. Think about when your mother hugs you or helps you go to bed at night and kisses you. And God is also like a father. He's gentle and strong and helps keep us safe. That's one of the things I remember about my dad. God is like a rainbow. That's kind of magical, isn't it? When you go outside one day and there's a rainbow and everybody goes, oh, there's a rainbow, there's a rainbow, come and look. It's like a promise. God is like a best friend. Yeah, when I think about my best friends and I think God is like that, they listen to me when I'm sad or when I'm concerned about something. And because we know what God is like, we know that God is kind, that he's forgiving, he's slow to get angry, he's quick to be glad, and God is happy when you tell the truth, and he's sad when things are unfair. She's your protector. He's trustworthy. They're friends when you feel alone. God hopes. God persevere. So what is God like? God. Is all of those things put together. And even if we can't see him or hear him or touch him, we can remember those things that God is like and remember what God is like. Okay. So, would you bow your head with me, please? Dear God, thank you for being all those things for us. Thank you for being all those things for us. Even if we don't completely understand it. Be with us this week. Amen. Amen. And I think you guys are going to a children's church. Thank you for being good listeners. For the hymn, number 120, I, I would encourage you if, you, if you're so moved, to take up your hymnal and actually look at the music. This is a, one that's kind of new to us. I, I, I don't think I've ever sung it before. Joe sent it to me. Um, but it's a, it's a really pretty hymn. Um, it's called Your Love, O God. It'll just help you to follow along, I think. Your love, O oh God, is broad like beach and meadow, white as the wind, and our eternal home. You leave us free to seek you or reject you. 
give us room to answer yes or no. Your love, O oh God, is broad like beach and meadow, wide as the wind, and our eternal home. We long for freedom where our Go for dreaming and look for ground where trees and plants can grow. Your love, O oh God, is broad like beach and meadow, white as the wind and our eternal home. But there are that keep us all divided. We fence each other in with hate and war. Fear is the bricks and mortar of our prison. Our pride of self, the prison coat we and meadow, white as the wind, and our eternal home. Oh, judge us, Lord, and in your judgment free us, and set our feet in freedom's open space. Take us as far as your compassion wanders, and in the children of the human race, your love, O oh God, is broad like beach and meadow, wide as the wind, and Well, what'd you think? Did you like it? Okay, good. Good, good, good. You know, there, there's that challenge of, um, there's a committee of us that, that get together and, and look at hymns, and every now and then, you know, we'll, we'll have something pop up that it's like, oh, yes, I love that song, and the rest of the committee goes, never heard it, never heard it. So this is a beautiful hymn that I'm glad we were able to find our space into it and enjoy it together. Before we, before I read the scriptures, I'm juggling too many things up here and I'm sorry. There's something important that happens when, when we really take serious our uh, relationship with God and, and we say that we're gonna commit ourselves as believers to understanding more. So I get up every week or whoever's you know, in the worship leader position and, and reads a scripture to you and, and you assimilate that and then there's a message that comes with it that hopefully ties it all together so it makes sense and gives you some courage to go out and do whatever it is you're called to do. Well, sometimes we need to have a sense of where we're coming from in the scriptures. And so we're just finishing up uh, Luke this season. Now the fun is we get to go back to Luke in the birth narrative and that's what we read on on Christmas Eve but I want you to have a sense of where this scripture is coming from and why Luke had written it. The Gospel of Luke and so this is a study Bible I'm sorry all that and I didn't tell you what I'm doing. So this is a study Bible that has a preface going in to kind of set yourself into where this book was written and why the audience, some of those things. When we start reading scripture, it's pretty common for us to start thinking in terms of uh, Jesus must have said all of those words instead of understanding that might have been written in a different voice. 
that the you that is being spoken to may not be you, the congregation, but may be you, the enemy outside. And so we need to take that moment to kind of understand who the pronouns are for, uh, who's the object of this conversation, and where we're coming from. So I'm just going to read to you from my Wesley Study Bible what Luke is supposed to be about for each of us. The Gospel of Luke is the only gospel addressed to a specific individual, most excellent Theophilus. He was a, it was a common name in antiquity. It derives from the Greek words for God and love. The name means lover of God. So this dedication is to someone that loves God. It would be strictly symbolic, suggesting the gospel is dedicated to anyone who is a lover of God, or the name could refer to some unknown person in antiquity. The gospel is part of a two-volume history that concludes with the Acts of the Apostles. The opening words of Acts refer back to the gospel as in a book of which the author recounted all that Jesus did and taught. When we read side by side, as they are meant to be, the book of Luke and Acts, Luke and Acts from our most important sources for understanding the history of the earliest Christianity. The two books are held together by the theme of the plan of God. The history in these volumes relates how God <laughs> acted in Jesus of Nazareth to bring peace and justice into the world, and how God continued in this same mission through the apostles whom Jesus chose. As I'm still getting my things together here. And so our scripture reading comes from Luke. And while it sounds like it is kind of an um, interesting place to look at, this is actually just before the Passion narratives begin. And in fact, Jesus is starting to point to the disciples to understand things are going to change, which feels really awkward because we start Advent in two weeks, right? And we're back to baby, and we're back to understanding that piece. But there's something about our maturity that we can hold those things in tension, that this is a story that has always led us to the passion of Christ, even throughout the birth. And so reading from Luke 21, 5 through 19. Some people were talking about the temple, how it was decorated with beautiful stones and ornaments dedicated to God. Jesus said, as for the things you are admiring, the time is coming when not even one stone will be left upon another. All will be demolished. They ask him, teacher, when will these things happen? What sign will you show that these things are about to happen? And Jesus said, watch out that you aren't deceived. Many come in my name saying, I'm the one and it's time. Don't follow them. When you hear of wars and rebellions, don't be alarmed. These things must happen first, but the end won't happen immediately. Then Jesus said to them, nations and kingdoms will fight against each other. There will be great earthquakes and wide-scale food shortages and epidemics. There will also be terrifying sights and great signs in the sky. But before all this occurs, they will take you into custody and harass you because of your faith. They will hand you over to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will provide you an opportunity to testify. Make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance. I'll give you words and wisdom that none of your opponents will ever be able to counter or contradict. You will be betrayed by your parents, your brothers and sisters, relatives and friends. They will execute some of you. Everyone will, will hate you because of my name. Still, not a hair on your heads will be lost. By holding fast, you will gain your lives. So, see why Lucy wasn't sure where to take that with the children's sermon today. <laughs> These are harsh words. <coughs> There's a lot of hard things that are going to happen. There's also some sense that if only you tell us when it's going to happen, we'll be just fine. If only we know that, this, that, that COVID is the pandemic that means 
If only we knew that World War II was the war of all wars and, and that that's the one we have to look out for. The family in disagreement that this must be that Jesus is coming. The communities that are divided by voting and responses and election results. All these things that have pitted friends, neighbors, and families against each other feel like the end of the world. But Jesus is saying, you will not perish in this. This is that bigger picture once more of a resurrection that is yet to come. Steve and I, as many of you know, were on a renewal leave, and, and we had the opportunity to travel to Ireland. And so we saw a lot of castles and monasteries that are just outlines of stone now. And in fact, we wondered sometimes as we just drove down the countryside and there would be another great big, um, uh, I don't even know what to call it, because it, it certainly wasn't what you could recognize at that point, but obviously it was centuries, centuries, centuries old uh, building. Um, if you just buy that land, just like any other real estate deal, and it comes with an old monastery on it. It was really interesting to see that, that these places were just out, and, and yet they'd fallen apart. And when they began to fall apart, did somebody say, oh no, the world is ending? Maybe. But it didn't. A personal world could have ended. A, a personal, oh, I love that place, and now it's not here, and the pain that that causes. But while we were in Ireland, we also had some signs, some opportunities to read some signs. So here's, here's some signs up here, but let me tell you about this one sign that we saw. Well, well there's two. One sign that it was like um, two lines this way and then two lines this way um, as we would be just driving along there in the country. And we couldn't quite figure out what it was until I did a Google search and it said that it means that there's an oncoming a highway that's kind of giving you a heads up. Be aware, there's something coming up pretty quick that you need to be aware of. One day we were driving in this area that has a lot of horses, and they had these big signs that was like a, a horse with a rider on it. And to know, because the roads are really, really narrow. Has any, I know, who else has been to Ireland? A, a few. The, the hedges are just like right up, there's not like a shoulder. The hedges are just right there, and so you have to be aware as you're driving, especially giving warning that there's these horses in the area, so you're, you're paying attention to that. Well, I don't know if it was somebody's sense of humor or if this just happened to work out, but so it was the horse riding sign above, and below it was the men working sign that had a man with a shovel. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was on purpose, but... Touche. You got me. You got me with that. This idea about not always understanding the signs and how important are they to us. Part of this scripture, you know, kind of made me think of Ecclesiastes, where there's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to weep and a time to laugh, that there's something about our lives hold a lot of stuff. We have extreme happiness and then we have grief that shakes us to the core of who we are. We have times when questions loom and answers come and they're the ones we were looking for so it's such a yay and then those times that it's a diagnosis and now what? The unknowing is really, really, really hard. Now, in Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, in the 65th chapter, and if you haven't read Isaiah, there's a lot to Isaiah to read. He's a prophet, and he is talking about the new creation. So this is 65, verses 17 through 25. And he is speaking for God at this point. He's a prophet, and he says, For I am about to create the new heavens and a new earth, the former things shall be remembered or come to mind. 
But be glad and rejoice forever in what I'm creating, for I'm about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cries of distress. No more shall there be an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred will be considered a youth and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered a curse. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and inhabit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For the days of a tree shall be like the days of my people be. And my chosen shall be long, enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be the offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They will not hurt or destroy all on my holy mountain. So we're setting in, in conflict this new creation, which written from Isaiah, is part of the oldest part of our Hebrew scripture. And putting it into context with what Jesus is talking about. Now, when he was talking about, they were looking at the temple and, oh, wow, it looks so good. Look at that. I love when they did that. And I love when they did that. And he says, you know, at some point, this second temple... Uh, 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 temple is going to fall. The word just went out of my head. And it had been torn down one time before it had been destroyed. And now there's just a part of it that's left there at the western wall uh, in Jerusalem where you can go and you can put prayers into and, and be a part of something that is oh so old. But he's setting us up for understanding that life is complicated. Life is not easy. A fairly new uh, conversation that has arisen um, in faith believers is that this idea that we are all just walking each other home. This ability to stand together in hardship and then somebody else will come along and step in with us also. As we look at this last week as... Uh, all Saints Sunday, when we recognize those that are no longer a part of our congregation but are a part of the church triumphant. We name names, we wrote down names. Going into a future that is unknown calls on each of us to maybe look at these symbols and see what they are about for each one of us. So the, the wolf there was... I thought a great uh, idea of looking at what does it mean when the wolf is going to be a part of that good creation. When they, creatures are in one with each other. And what does that mean for us in our times too? This idea about being careful about falling. Know your footing. How are you stepping out in faith? being present to other people. You know, our faith has never, ever been about just ourselves. It's always been about living together and that if we have any power, we are to use our power to help someone else find a place of comfort and peace and joy. That is what Jesus, what Jesus is continually uh, reminding all of the disciples about. This isn't just about you. It's about those others on the outside. Watch me visit with this woman who is at the well. Watch what this means to feed 5,000 plus with only these small provisions. Watch what it means when we're together at the table. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Now this railroad crossing sign I really liked because uh, I have a lot of railroaders in my family and you know usually we just think that it means kind of look both ways you know a train could be coming but I also lived in Newton Kansas for several years and Newton is a town that can be divided by those trains stopping on the tracks and you just wait there's no other way to get around and how often at that moment is there that inter, inner grumble, 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 grumble about the train, and yet that train is taking food to places, probably where eventually I'll get a meal from. That train is, is a huge piece of our transportation. So what does it mean for us to stand in a pause before we start that negativity that goes out into the world? This great explanation point. We mean it. We mean it. Whatever is the caution before, this is important. If it has a sign that says dip and then the exclamation point, ooh, right? It really is going to be there. What do you do that you mean it? That you do with some exuberance? That you enter into with this is important and I need you to know this Two, how do I save you? How do I help you? This is what I need. This is where my heart is broken. And this risk of shock sign. I think there's many, many, many times that we can think about our own shocking revelations, right? In our... Uh, Elections from Tuesday, there's just now still information coming out about who won which elections because things were so close, so close, that it's taken this long and longer. They don't have all the results in yet for many, many races. And I can't help but bring into this discussion the pain of the United Methodist Church and the sense of voting. There's many, many congregations that are standing in the place of deciding whether or not they want to pursue disaffiliation or stay part of the United Methodist Church. If you haven't been following much of that, it's okay. But what they do is they start out with a vote. And to proceed on from that uh, place, of decision making, a congregation has to have at least two thirds of its members, so 66% of its members vote to be able to do this. What many churches are having happen is that their numbers as they come out, they'll be 48%, you know, versus 52%. It's just like heartbreaking. It's too close for either side to make movement. And then there they are as community in heartbreak. If there's a place that you feel like you could pray into, I would ask you to pray for the United Methodist congregations all across the world that are, that are in this process. Looking to find a place that feels like who they are, living into a freedom of expression of who they feel they are called to be in God's love. We have this opportunity to share love into the world. We have the opportunity to be kindness into the world. We're going to have just in another couple of weeks the opportunity to gather at tables with family members that maybe not everyone feels the same about a lot of issues. And what would that look like to be in the kindness mode instead of the shocking, I need to make my point mode. I ask that you find your place in the world to serve, to make a difference, because each one of us need to be the light of Jesus giving, sharing, acts of kindness, 
hearing someone else's story that maybe you had no idea what that meant until you finally heard it there. We are people that are so fortunate that we have opportunity each and every week to bring things like food for Paxton's Blessing Box that can immediately go out and be served. We had an opportunity to help someone with their rent this week that it was a de desperate situation. And until you know about those things, you just don't know how other people are, are having to live right now. We're going to have an opportunity to give of our gifts and our offerings out in the narthex as we do now. We're going to have an opportunity to give of love and joy and peace to those that are around us. Because I believe the world will change when each one of us just do a little bit in our little circle. And then everyone else starts doing that. And before we know it, we can be living in the kingdom of God here and now. Now, I did kind of hear Jesus say, it might be tough getting there, but we're still called to try. Whatever you do, you can, you can say it if you want to. You know, what would Jesus do? You know, the little bracelets we used to wear. You can think of how would God use this situation? Where is the spirit in this moment? And then respond fully and with all you've got. Because really, that's all we've got. May it be so. Amen. I invite you to share with me in the words of dedication, those things that we dedicate to God for use, those things that we are intentional about, these things that aren't just a surprise but someone, something that we really wanted 
to make a difference into the world. Giving God, today as we draw together in remembrance of all those who have given of their time, talents, service, and lives to the service of others, at home and all over the world, we come offering these tokens of money, time, and talent as a sign of our resolve to continue to do your work in this world, so in need of your mission, message, love, and peace. Amen. Oh, we have announcements now, and I have several, but I know other people have announcements too, so if you want to make your way up. Uh, we're doing a, a this long uh, administrative council meeting. We just have a couple of things that we have to get approved before we go to a, a charge conference next Sunday at 2 o'clock that you're all invited to. Uh, Gloria, would you like to talk to us about a parking lot? Greetings. I got a few things I need to discuss with you or I'd like to discuss with you. One, I'm back. Uh, I've been trying to get Joe to do a song and dance ever since, since she got back. So you want to do it now? Oh, okay. One, I don't sing. I don't dance. You don't want to see either one. But first of all, I want to thank everybody that signed up so far on the parking lot committee. We've got most of the first half signed up. We are still looking for the second half. Uh, it's not very done yet, but that's after the first of the year. So we, we've done, we started out really good. So thank you for everybody that's signed up so far. Uh, I promised you last time that I would model the best. So here we go. They're, you know, they're so nice. <laughs> they, and they do kind of help with the wind. We, we learned that. So, <laughs> that's kind of my nice dance, too. So, so far, we've uh, sold 23 of our hang tags, which we're not calling them hang tags this year. Because if you think about it, it's all about us that's out there working. So what they're doing is we're selling these and we're asking the holders to roll down their window and shine them at us. So if it's really cold, we can still sit in our car yeah. and they can show it to us. And we're staying warm because, like I said, it's about us. Right? <laughs> right? All right. Uh, another thing that we're doing this year is we're not putting up the barricades and all the cones to make it easier on us. Uh, right now, all we're doing is the two A-frame signs to block this parking lot and the one over here, uh, four little or or, uh, green signs and two flags. So make it easier on us. Uh, did you guys have fun yesterday? Yes. Yes. Oh, super. Yeah. Okay, it's fun. <laughs> all right. We had one customer when Jane and I was working the other night that said we were having so much fun, they didn't want to go to the game, they wanted to stay out there with us. So, <laughs> you know, you get to learn who you're working with. And we, we try to have fun yeah. doing it. So, uh, again, thank you, thank you, thank you for helping us out. We would like some more help. And we are trying to have one committee member help out, so there's no questions, you, you know, that you don't. But you got plenty of help, right? Yeah, okay. we'll talk about questions later. <laughs> okay, so that's what I have to say about the parking. If they've got any questions, I have this after church and during admin. Uh, one other thing, uh, Marjorie asked me to, uh, Bruce is needing some ushers for December. I think um, Arby and Larry took care of that for you. So tell Bruce, no concern there. So thanks again, you guys, appreciate it. So I hope that you all understood that you get to wear that fantastic 
vest when you're out. We have lots of them, lots of them. The other announcement I'd like to make, there was a contingent that was last night at the Kansas Aviation Museum, and we were a part of supporting Harold Walter as he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. So if you get a chance to be able to talk to Harold, yeah, it was a good night. It was a good night. <laughs> I have just a couple of quick things. Um, Ricky and I and Alicia, is there anybody else here that sings in it? Are singing with the Wichita Symphony Chorus, and that concert is next weekend on Saturday evening at Century Two, and the chorus is doing with the symphony the Mozart Requiem, and uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful piece of music, um, and so we would love to have you join us for that. You call the symphony office to get tickets. Um, and then the other thing, I, I told Danita that I would make this announcement for her. Danita and Doug's daughter, youngest daughter, Nikki Stimmett, um, graduated in May from, um, um, what's, what's? University of California, Irvine. UC Irvine uh, with, her, with her law degree and found out last week she passed the bar. So we have officially have an attorney on our hands. Uh, Joe, Children's Choir, December 4th, because of the time of Thanksgiving. Say again. Children's Choir, December 4th. Oh, that's right. On December 4th, 9th. Huh? December. For symphony. Here. Oh, I don't know what you want me to do. Symphony, go. go. <laughs> All right, I'll interject quickly while they game plan. Um, I just wanted to put one final plug in that if you didn't turn in your pledge paperwork, it is not too late. We'll take it any time. Um, and even if you're set up for automatic withdrawals, it would be good to just reconfirm that you want that process to continue. Um, otherwise, we'll just reach out to you. So if you want to save that step, um, you can reach out to myself or someone in the office um, get those final pledges turned in. We appreciate that because that helps us be able to set a realistic budget for next year. So thank you. And I'll make this quick. Just only, only the only reason why I'm doing it so quick um, early is because um, not only are we with the Wichita Symphony, but I'm also the president of the board of the Wichita Children's Choir, and they are singing with the symphony on December the fourth, a Saturday. I mean Sunday afternoon with the Snowman, the little animated, which is a Wichita person who did that animation. So it should be totally delightful. So lots, it's the seasons in the air. And we will be having the Advent Festival right after church on November uh, 27th. Uh, we will have a light meal, we will decorate, we will make crafts. It's going to be a great and fun time for everyone. So, um, and the committee met, and we will be having two services on Christmas Eve, and we will have a service in the gathering place on Christmas Day. So just on the things you need to uh, check mark right now and, and know that they're good. I invite you to stand as you are able, and together let's sing, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. <laughs>
we leave from this space, from this beloved community, to go out into the world to share with abundance, with hope, comforting those that are in pain or in sorrow, being present to those that have many needs. Together, let us say these words of Cindy. Let us stand firm in faith in the face of all the world throws at us. As we witness this week to the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the three, we go out to serve. Go in peace. Oh.